Once the opportunity arose for him to close the show, he did it in emphatic style. Whatever he hits, falls. Umar Ahmed, IFL TV, MTK Global. We're in Las Vegas. There's a Mexican feel to it. It's Mexican Independence Week and Tyson Fury is headlining. Uh, he's just the right fit for this, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He is, and I knew he would be because I know what kind of personality he is, how he feels about people. Uh, Mexicans, you know, who are really being introduced to him for the first time, I'm gonna, I love him. He's, you know, and, 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 and they... They're, they are millions and millions of Mexicans in the United States, Mexican Americans, and that's the fan base we're going after. Mm. Uh, we expect him to come through Otto Wallin uh, on Saturday night, and then we're expecting that uh, much anticipated rematch with Deontay Wilder. He's made some interesting comments recently, Bob. Uh, Deontay's come out and said he wants the winner of Joshua Ruiz, and he's uh, willing to pay step aside money to Tyson. No. <laughs> Deontay Wilder talk sometime for the sake of talking. He's an excellent fighter. He's a really nice, nice young man. But he knows and we know that the contracts are signed already for Tyson Fury to fight Deontay Wilder. So whatever he has to say, for whatever reason he's saying it, is something that I don't take very seriously. Mm. So you just think it's a bit of tongue in cheek? Because he can't, he, basically what you're saying, he can't get out that contract. Yeah, listen. Fighters talk for the sake of talking. You know, that guy Chisora, who said that he didn't want to be uh, fighting under, not the main event. Well, he knew damn well that his fight was not the main event. He just had to walk into the room and see that it was the... 140 pound championship that was the main event but fighters like to talk and they like to make a stir and I've been around long enough that I don't take any of it very seriously mm. Bob I want to address something there's rumours going around that Gerald Miller signed with top rank can you comment on that? no false? I'm not going to comment on Okay. I mean I have, I'm a great admirer of Miller I think he has a tremendous future but beyond that, I'm not going to comment. Fair enough. Uh, heavyweight, you have got Kubat Prulev. Uh, can you give us any updates on him? I'm guessing the course he did uh, about that nonsense is all done. Yeah, that's all done. We've, he's gotten a certificate from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, uh, on sexual harassment education. I also went to that, and I got a certificate. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, right. So I hang that proudly on my wall. What did you have wall. to do? We had to listen to lectures, lecture, and then answer questions. It was very revealing, you know? But, but we, we went through it. I mean, and he went through it. I mean, I didn't think that what he did was egregious. But again, that's behind us, and Pulev is fighting uh, next uh, uh, in uh, uh, Fresno, California in November. Yeah. Uh, November down at November 9th yeah. November 9th in Fresno California uh, I don't know I forget who he's fighting but uh, we're going to keep him busy because he's the mandatory for Joshua and Ruiz yeah I'm sure it'll just be a, a tick over and then he's the winner of that fight uh, he's, a, he's a as you said the mandatory so he's got a world title shot and uh, you, you could have a, another world champion on your hands if he does the business yeah I think so uh, you know I mean I uh, I, I, he's confident, Pula, that he could beat either uh, Joshua or Ruiz. What do you make of that fight landing in Saudi Arabia, Bob? I have no comment. Okay, okay. Uh, another big talking point in boxing right now is uh, this fight between two YouTubers headlining Staple Center with uh, Billy Joe Saunders and Devin Haney on the undercard of that. Um, what do you make of that being a main event? I never heard of those people. I mean, I, that doesn't mean anything, you know. But throughout history, we've had uh, joke fights uh, to bring attention to cards. It's nothing unusual. We had these two actors fight, you know, Mickey, uh, whatever his name was, uh, Mickey Rourke or something like that. Okay. Yeah, he, you know, so we, uh, two tall Jones, you know. We've had those kind of... Uh, you know, uh, I did Butterbean, 
which was like at a drag. So it is what it is. And if it uh, brings in fans to watch legitimate boxing, all to the good. Well, that's what Eddie I mean, said, we're yeah. still in the entertainment business. I've never heard of these guys, but apparently a lot of the younger people have. Mm. So fine, no, no problem with that. Mm. No problem. They're not, you're not representing anything that's not true. Mm. Nobody says these are world-class fighters, you know. They're entertainers and they're having a go at it because they can get some publicity and some money. Mm. Is there any harm in it? I don't think so. Well, no, yeah. If they if they stay in boxing and uh, tune in to, to fights from there, then it's They're only not going to stay in boxing. This is a one-off for them. If they stay in boxing, it would be to fight each other. Come on. <laughs> so surely you think that's not good for the sport then? It's okay for the sport. If, you know, is, is uh, uh, rap music uh, being played during boxing shows good for the sport yeah because it entertains people right yep so i mean but it's not of the essence of the sport and that is what people really miss i mean nobody if if somebody was representing these two guys as world-class fighters that would be wrong that would be deceitful but nobody is they're not fighters they're two entertainers that are having a go at each other. So what? That's good. <laughs> I want to take your mind back to London a few weeks ago where Lomachenko was received uh, like a, a true celebrity uh, within uh, the UK. Uh, firstly, what did you make of the scorecards? A lot of people say it should have been a, a little bit closer. No, I had, uh, I scored it uh, uh, two rounds uh, for Campbell. Right. I mean, not that he, he didn't contest the fight, but I think Loma Kef, you know, clearly won 10 rounds. Okay. What's next for Vasily? He, he told me that unless there's a big offer to fight outside the United States, he wants to take off the rest of the year and then face uh, in the first quarter of the year the winner of Comey Lopez. Well, that would be excellent. And uh, you've got both guys, so it would be an easy one to make as well. Yes, that's an easy one to make. And if Loma is successful, he would then be the undisputed lightweight champion. And then we're going to have him fight all of the best fighters from 126 to 135. Mm. Just closing off, uh, back to the, the main man, Tyson Fury. Uh, you, you gave a speech up there uh, during the press conference, the undercar press conference, about him being a traveler and that he relates to the Mexican people, the hardship that Mexicans have faced uh, in America and uh, the hardships that travelers have faced in the UK and around the world. Uh, yeah, just uh, your thoughts on that. Well, I mean, that's obviously the case. I mean, you know, he really relates to the Mexican people because of his own experience with his people. You know, it's no secret how badly travelers have been treated not only in the UK, but even worse in, 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 the, in continental Europe. Mm. Uh, so we know that. And he sees how this country that prides itself on liberalism and democratic tradition, how badly we're treating the Mexican and Mexican people who certainly aren't citizens. And, uh, you know, he... he, 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 he is angry about it as I am. So this oh, he's is, spoken uh, to you about it, has he? Yes, of course, of course. Mm, what does he say about it? Just exactly. Read the article in the Telegraph by uh, Gareth Davis. By Garrett Davis, and that reflects Tyson Fury's views, which he's related to me as well. Mm. This is uh, for the lineal championship. We know that he's a lineal champion. This still gets played down by certain people in boxing. That they don't see him as the lineal champion. Um, he Who still cares what they think? <laughs> as long as they, you know, he did more subscriptions for ESPN Plus when he fought Schwarz, more subscriptions than all of the fights that Eddie Hearns put on. Total. People quoted me as saying, of any, no, of all of them. You put them all together, and Tyson Fury in one fight did more subscribers. Well, yeah, Eddie has said in the past he's one of the most unentertaining fighters he's ever seen, Tyson Fury. 
No. Eddie Hearn is not a really good promoter because if you're a good promoter, you don't talk about the other guys' fights and the other guys' fighters because it just gives them publicity. You don't do that. I don't talk bad about any Eddie Hearns' cards. I don't even mention I don't want to give him publicity. I don't talk about his fighters. Why? I don't want to give him publicity. I mean, why? I mean, that's <laughs> stupid. Eddie Hearns is like an amateur that has come in to the United States and has become the laughing stock of the United States. Talk to other promoters. Talk to Mayweather. Talk to Leonard Ellaby about Eddie Hearn. He's a joke. All he do, can do is write checks and give away money. Bob Aaron, thank you very much for your time in Las Vegas. We look forward to an amazing night on Saturday. Thank you. And I'm sure we'll catch up soon, okay? Thank you. Once the opportunity arose for him to close the show, he did it in emphatic style. Whatever he hits, falls.